Hello everyone, Kirith here, and if you've just started iRacing, or you've been on iRacing for a little bit, but you don't think you really know how it works, how you progress, I've made this video specifically for you. I do a lot of iRacing on this channel, sprint race, endurance races, 24 hour races, and I've done a lot of events. And uh, I want to let you know kind of what I think are the best ways to progress in iRacing, and just basically how the progression works, because it's not the same as other simulations or games you may have played. So when you join up to iRacing, you'll see a screen like this, except you won't see this screen because I'm an A-licensed driver, so I have access to all of these events. I've actually driven in lots of them. But when you start out, this is what you'll see. And uh, I've limited this to road, but you will just see two events in road. So that's all you can do. And it might be a bit difficult to work out, well, how do I get from here to doing all of those GT events and LMP2 events and F3 events, F1 events, stuff like that. So how it works in iRacing racing is if you look up here on the top right, you have your safety rating and you also have your um, uh, I rating as well. So here for road, my safety rating is 3.28 and my I rating is 2000. So the important thing to bear in mind when it comes to iRacing racing and progression is it's pretty much all about your safety rating. You can be an A licensed driver and have like an I rating of 200. That's absolutely fine. But in order to get to a, a license, you need to have had safety racing above. I think the promotion is 3.0. So get up by 3.0 and you'll be promoted to the next license at the end of the season. So you start off here. How are you going to get promoted to A license? <laughs> so you've got two options, Formula V and Global Mazda. Formula V is an open wheeled series and Global Master is in the Mazda MX-5, it kind of leads into the GT style tin top racing. What would I recommend? Well, form, I'd, I've done both of them. They're both a lot of fun and fun is the most important thing. But in terms of progressing, if you do the Global Mazda rookie races and if you start in the pack, it is very, 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 very difficult to pick up enough safety rating to get promoted. It's very difficult. And it doesn't really matter how fast you are. Unless you're so fast that you can escape off the first couple of corners. If you can't, then it's risky. You know, I, I race with people who are very, very, very fast in Mazdas. And even they kind of struggle to avoid picking up a lot of safety instant points. So if you can do your Global Mazdas, basically, I would recommend in the long run, just actually biting the bullet and starting from the pit, going around, getting accustomed with the car, treating it as a bit of a time trial and basically forgetting about your I rating and just concentrating on getting that safety rating up. Because if you try and do both, and most people try and be, do both, and I started out, I tried to do both, it's pretty much impossible. You cannot do it. Let me know in the comments if you're someone who's managed to do Global Master MS5 rookies and both improved your I rating and kicked your points down because it's very difficult. Formula V is a bit different. Formula V, the Formula V open wheel car is actually just fundamentally in, in my opinion harder to drive than the ms5 so you're more likely to lose safety points through spins and maybe getting caught up in accidents and stuff like that but um it's a very fun series it's relatively new to iRacing. racing it wasn't around when i started and possibly a better way through than mx5 but if you want to do if you want to progress a kind of gt3 gte lmp2 stuff then this is kind of a nice pathway to that because you're gonna be learning how to drive those sort of cars if you want to do open wheel cars, you really want to get up to driving the Mercedes W12, for example, then you could use that. So that's a bit of personal preference, but there's a couple of tips. Basically, in Formula V, just be very careful about not losing control or drivers ahead of you losing control during their accident. You're going to lose safety points that way. And with Global Master MS5, just I wouldn't start on the grid. I'd start in the pits until you get your uh, D license. So you progress up to rookies and you get your Class D license. And then you have all of these available. We'll get rid of the rookie ones, we've seen them ready. And what would I do here? Well, Sim Labs is an absolutely great series. It will be your first taste of, of multi-class. You've got the Solstice, the Jetta, the Mazda and the Mustang. I really enjoy driving, driving the Mustang. And um, because it's multi-class, it's, it's a little bit more calm. You also get to practice kind of driving with cars of a different speed which is what you'll have to do if you want to do the Daytona 24 hours, Nürburgring 24 hours, Spa 24 hours, they're all multi-class races. This really is a great, great championship. And a lot of people actually just do this championship even if they're a higher license. It's a lot of fun. 
you also got the global Fanatec challenge optima and cadillac this is kind of a form to do um cadillac's kind of a bit of a weapon to drive but i can recommend that as well you can see here that it's at a free circuit at the moment um and the same with similars i think it also goes to a lot of free circuits uh Okiyama is is included in your um in your uh, subscription fee now ferrari g3 fixed i've done this a lot if you're going to buy your first car for when you progress out of rookies I can thoroughly recommend the Ferrari 488 G3, now the Evo car, it used to be the non-Evo version. Um, it's a great car, it's my favourite car in the game, I love using it for endurance races, but this series has, has a reputation for being very, very, very carnage <laughs> It has a really bad reputation, um, everyone seems to be very impatient, there are a lot of crashes, there's a lot of aggro. I've I've raced in it. I've my experience has been fine, but a lot of people in my community um, have had bad experiences. In it. By the way, if you do want to join a sim racing community that does a lot of i racing, matching up teams for endurance races, we do our own community specials. Then do make sure to join our Discord. There's a link in the description. You absolutely won't regret it. It might even change your life. It's absolutely true. Skip Barber. This was kind of the early. This was like the entry to open wheels before the Formula V. I've done a few of these back in the day and um, it's a fun series. I'm not crazy about the Skip Barber car uh, compared to say the F3, which I much prefer. Um, but again, if you like your open world formula racing, then you can do the uh, Skip Barber. It's a fun series. And yeah, doing any of those will progress you up and get you the eligibility to go up to uh, C-Class. I haven't actually done the Touring Car Challenge yet. I need to do that now. There are additional touring cars available. Uh, when I started, it was only the Audi, which I have driven around. Um, in fact, in a league in the Audi. And now there's multiple touring cars. So I have to consider that. But touring cars is pretty famous for being quite argy-bargy. When you want to rank up, like I said, the most important thing is your safety rating. I'll show you here how my safety rating has uh, developed. Uh, if we go into stats. So... Uh, Anyway, here we go, Braid. So here you can go. Uh, this is my eye rating. It's my eye rating developing. So when I started in May 2020, and I was doing a lot of league racing this year, I was doing Motorsport UK league racing, Club 100 league racing. But you can see I wasn't really doing anything with my eye rating. And then as I've uh, kind of progressed on the series, I've had a, it's a big jump here. I don't know what happened there, but got some uh, eye rating. But anyway, so those are the things I would do to kind of progress out of uh, D license and all these events are eligible. So you do these uh, class D licenses and they will rank you up. Um, so you'll be eligible to, to progress to C grade once you hit that um, required rating on the on the safety rating. Good to see 11,000 members online. Now, our racing is just growing, growing, growing. Now where would I go from there? Now we're in C class. Now. For me, in iRacing, you can pretty much end at C-Class, to be honest, because you get access to um, the VRS Endurance races, which are pretty much, I think, some of the best racing you can do on iRacing. I've done a lot of these. I really, really enjoy them. GT3 cars, it's absolutely superb. The BAP is often really good. Three-hour races, you can do them with three of you, you can do them with two of you. So if you just know one other person um, who wants to race, you can match up with them. And they're absolutely great. I've had some superb races in that series. And people do that series weekend out, weekend in, weekend in, weekend out. So you race the same teams and the same people. And it's really, really cool. This is a special event here that I'm going to be doing shortly after making this video. And you can see it's available um, to drivers who are Class C. In fact, if, you're, um, if you've got a D4 license, you, so you're basically about to get automatically promoted, it will let you in as well. So you can see it's pretty much all about safety rating I race in terms of progressing up. And that is a special event that's available to um, Class C. I think it's the same for the Daytona 24, actually. Um, so a lot of the special events actually don't have a really high license requirement. What else would I do here? I really like the F3 car in iRacing. It is it is really, really, really fun. It's nothing like driving the GT cars. It's all about kind of spatial awareness very hard to drive very easy to lock up very easy to spin out on the throttle but it is, it is a great car to drive and this is quite a fun series 
um, where you can race other people in that. In fact, there's two F3 series now, which is very, very, very cool. Um, Advanced Master, again, if you really like the Masters, there's more Master stuff to do. People really like the series. And uh, the driving can be a little bit more respectful, but ultimately it's Master racing. The racing is going to be very close. There is going to be contact. So if you've got your C license, you're not too worried about your safety rating, then yeah, why not go for that? And like I said, once you get to C license, you can do a lot of really, really cool stuff. You don't even really need to worry about what's beyond that sometimes. And um, this is the IMSA Pilot one, isn't it? Yeah, this is an interesting series. So you've got the GT4s and touring cars. Um, not really my favourite series. I prefer the IMSA Haggerty, actually, which has the... Uh, used to be GT3s and PTs, but I think now it'll be GT3 because IMSA have gone... IMSA dropped GTEs and they went GT3s. But yeah, I'm not crazy about this series, actually. But there is a Daytona, so maybe I'll try that as a uh, practice for the rule. So you're doing your C-Class stuff. What happens when you go to Class B? VRS sprints. These are great practice for the VRS endurances. They're about, what, 45 minutes? Um, and your fuel tank is not big enough for to go the whole race, so you do need to make a pit stop. Don't need to change tyres or anything like that. Um, that's a great series. It's, it's in the week before the VRS endurance at the weekend, so that is like a classic. I absolutely love that stuff. This is IMSA Endurance, they must have changed the name, it's no longer the Haggerty one, it's just Endurance now. And it's just GT3s and LMP2s. So this is a great series, it kind of is similar to I think to the European Endurance series. Which, oh no this is IMSA Haggerty, sorry hang on, uh, what was it looking at? This is the Endurance one and Haggerty is a sprint, so I like these for the sprint because it's unusual that you do a kind of sprint race with LMP2s and GT3s in a sprint format and then this um follows the same format as vrs so you have the endurance race as well formula 3.5 i don't have the formula 3.5 um so i can't really comment on that but if it's similar to the f3 then i'm sure it's pretty good never done the lmpt prototype one as you progress up the rankings and the stuff you really like you i think a lot of people don't really hop around as much it's also very expensive to do that um so i'm kind of letting you know which ones i do fanta gt3 fixed is interesting because it's on the same night as VRS um, sprints. VRS sprints are open setup, so it's a really cool way of testing setups before the endurance race. Manchester GT3 is fixed. Sometimes that can mean that one car is is particularly OP at, at a circuit. But what's great is on one evening you can just alternate between both of them. See, so this starts at midnight. This one starts at 1:15. You can go between both and not have a huge gap. In between and they both run the same circuit so i think this was a highly requested feature by the community and it's great they've done that there's not a lot of waiting around so once you've done class b get your a license you see you don't get a lot endurance european endurance is kind of the limon equivalent to imsa endurance um except it's not except now it's different yes because in the real world imsa dropped gte for gt3 whereas Le Mans are continuing GT3, GTE for a couple of years. I really like driving the GTE card. You can see I've bought most of them, but I should buy the Ford as well because I'm private. Then I have all of them. Um, and I'm really sad that IMSA are dropping them because they're more kind of more racy cars than GT3s. I think there's no ABS, much less trash control. Um, kind of harder to drive, but more rewarding. Um, so you get that in European Duras. And this is a six hour series of last year. In the summer, they actually made every race a 24-hour race. <laughs> so they could do the Le Mans 24 hours, uh, which was crazy. Although I know some people who um, did every one, which is absolutely insane. GP Fixed is the McLaren, uh, McLaren? Mercedes W12. So you can see there's kind of a pathway. If you want to go Formula V, um, F, uh, Skip Barber, F3, 3.5, and then W12, if you really like the open wheel stuff. Um, and you can also, there's a pathway on, on the other side, you can do Masters all the way up, or you can progress Masters to like um, the LMPTs in here, or the GTEs in here, or GT3s and the IMSA ones. So yeah, these, these are great series, and this is a sprint, again, during the week before the Endurance series. And then the only one other than that is Pro, which they give out to Pro drivers, and I don't think you, there's not, nothing special there. Special there, even, if I can speak properly. So those are all the series. And I hope that's been helpful. Do let me know in the comments if that's helpful. If you've got any questions, we'll do our best to answer them. Make sure to join Discord if you're looking for people to race with. 
because we do community events stuff like that but the most important thing basically is look after your safety rating like it's a precious egg that could break and leave egg all over your car just keep it intact until you at least get into like d and then once you're in d you've got options so you could just kind of do more racing where the racing is the way safety racing works is it averages every um instance per corner so when you do the longer races it's just the mass adds up in your favor whereas if you're doing mazdas at line rock the mass is like really badly not in your favor <laughs> when it comes to, to progressing so yeah really hope that's been helpful do let me know and uh, i hope you'll be on iRacing racing and you'll see a screen like this and be like right what am i gonna do and uh like i'm gonna do right now after making this video i'm just gonna have a crack and grace somewhere maybe f3 i feel like i'm gonna have an f3 race yeah hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you next time